to the level of sacrifice. That is prayer above prayer. Prayer above prayer. Operating at a higher level. At a higher frequency. Therefore, I'm going to make a lot of reference to sacrifice. Sacrifice. And the sacrifice is an offering on an altar to God or to God's. It's always for the reason, for a reason to please the God, your God the gods in order to get a blessing in return. So it's something precious you present before the altar of your God in order to get a blessing in return. And sacrifice always involves the shedding of And the blood is the power behind the altar because it provides the altar with life, with the voice to speak on behalf of the one who is sacrificing. All in accordance with the covenant that has been established upon that altar. The voice of the blood, the voice of the altar is in Therefore, wherever there is a sacrifice, there is love. 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 You know, in the Old Testament, people used to sacrifice animals in their altar. But in the New Testament, the Bible says, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable before God, which is your acceptable way of service. Offering yourself as a living, that is a requirement in the New Testament. So we don't sacrifice you but you sacrifice yourself. That means, now, when you give, when you give, when you give, whatever you give, that is sweat. Sweat is your blood. So, what is money? Money is not coins or pieces of Pesa tu sio karatasi. Pesa ni inaakilisha jasho ya mu. Na jasho ya mtu ni nini? Jasho ya mtu ni nini? Na Bwana anahitaji nini? Ufanye nini? Ulete nini kwa madhabahu? Damu. Sacrifice. So when you give your money, what are you doing? You are offering yourself as a living sacrifice when you give your wealth when you give your property when you give 
anything that has come from you, produce from the land, when you give your property, by the way, when you look at the New Testament, the power behind the church in the New Testament, the grace of the sacrifice. They gave. Agu kwa mabadle ni. Agu kwa Did you see any fundraising in the New Testament? But God touched men and women of faith. They gave their property. Mtu analete shamba yake anasema pastor iuzwe kazi ya bwana iendelee. Mwingine analete taitu ya nyumba yake anasema pastor iuzwe kazi ya bwana iendelee. Mwingine analete gari yake anasema pastor iuzwe kazi ya bwana iendelee. Mwingine anaenda analeta pesa ya yote account analete kana ile kwa madhabahu anasema pastor ka kazi ya bwana iendelee. That is sacrifice. Kazi haikuperekwa na na mabadilizi. Hello Nai tabia tulitoa wapi? Wachungaji siku ni haipi. Hii tabia tulitoa wapi? Tunasema atikazi ya Bwana lazima ile. Karabi, karabi. Ili toka wapi? It is not in the Bible. It is not in the Bible. Kazi ya Bwana ilikuwa inaendeshwa na watu wanalete the bills zao kwa madhabahu. Biblia inasema kwa hiyo kanisa hakukua maskini na hakukua mahitaji watu wote walikuwa wamebarikiwa Amen Lakini leo tunafanya maharambe na vile watu wamekaukiwa na kulia Sacrifice when god was led to solve the problem of sin in the world once and for all he chose the way of sin sacrifice he chose the way of when god wanted to solve the problem of sin in the world once and for all he chose the way of sacrifice would you want to solve your problems once and for all would you want to solve want to solve your problems once and for all hello he offered jesus he offered jesus Bible is referred to as the only begotten son on the cross for our sins for our redemption and with the power of that sacrifice so when that sacrifice was offered Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 25 7 that there was a great earthquake great fear you know evil powers submitted captives were set free the devil no longer had the keys to the death and the hates everything was overturned when he offered when God offered up in his altar and that sacrifice, and that sacrifice, mind you, has delivered today billions of people. And it is still working and powerful. And it still speaks. That sacrifice still speaks. Because a sacrifice is something that can be generational. It 
can speak in this generation and speak in the next generation and speak in the other generation and speak in the other generation sacrifice hmm? but you can wait upon that generation and wait upon the other one and in the third generation and the third generation and the sacrifice and then the, the power of that sacrifice in the new altar it defeated the enemies of the kingdom you remember it raised Jesus Christ from the dead promoted Jesus to the highest level gave him a name above every name in this age and also the age that is to come he said the captives is free East healing and restoration. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, operating at the relating to God at the level of sacrifice. You want to come, my Meshika? Salimia, we are going to get a sasa to Relating to God at the level of sacrifice. As on as I get praise and worship, it's my many up on Wombe. You are very smart. And I thank you for the wonderful presentation and uh, allowing God to use you to be a blessing to us. Baba, wabari tu watu mishwa kona uzidi kwa idua. Ili uduma yao, inatawala. Wape kibali, kufungulie milango, wapiganie vita zote, in Jesus' holy name. God bless you. Now, the Bible says when Noah and his children came out of the ark, they laid an altar and sacrificed to God. In the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 20 to verse 21. Genesis, chapter 8, verse 20. And God established a covenant of peace. Abraham, uh, with, with Noah, with Noah and, and his descendants. Are you there? Genesis chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 22. Start from verse 20. The Bible says, And Noah built an altar to the Lord after the flood. Now, you remember? An altar. Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every green animal and every green bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. See the progression. Number one, he built an altar to God. Number two, he took of every green animal, every green bird. He chose the best. After building the altar, he chose the best, the most precious he had and offered a burnt offering on the altar. Verse 21. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. The Lord said in his heart, I will never again cause the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. Burn us for some. Amen. 
immediately Noah alipotoka wa the ark Biblia inasema kwamba akainulia Mungu madhabahu na akachagua hakuwa na haraka na kutoa dhambi Mwalimu mwenzako mwambie uzui usikuange na haraka ya kutoa sadaka usikuange na haraka ya kutoa dhambi Fanya mahesabu kwanza what are you doing He took time and he chose the best and came and offered to God as a sacrifice Biblia inasema when he did that wakati alipofanya hivyo naye Mungu akasikia ha eh? manukato mazuri kutokana na hiyo dhabibu akiwa mbinguni na akaanza kujinenea na yeye mwenyewe akaweka agano la amani ya kwamba hata wai tena kuharibu dunia na maji hivyo ni kumaanisha alipoenda kwa Mungu kwa maombi ya shukurani na ile dhambi hata kabra hajaomba baada tu ya kutoa dhambi Mungu anaanza kuweka angalo Mungu anaanza kubadilisha mambo Biblia inasema Noa akaweka agano la amani na akaweka agano la amani na na Mungu kwa sababu vua ilikuwa imetoka kwa Silikuwa imetoka kwa Mungu. Na sasa akatoa dhabiu ya dhamana na akaweka agano la amani na Yeyote anaye kutana na mapigo kutoka kwa Mungu. Ama anaona mapigo yanapitia karibu naye kutoka kwa Mungu. Simama toa dhabiu la kuweka agano la amani na Mungu. Na hiyo mapigo haitakuona. Haitakuona Bwana asifiwe sana. Itakupita. Daudi alikuwa anasema Isaburi kriya ni ya Moses. Psalms 90:1 ya Musa. Alikuwa anasema mkono wa kulia watu wa elfu moja wa, ya kushoto watu wa elfu moja. Wa, mkono wa kulia watu elfu kumi na mimi ninawaacha nikiwa nimesimama. Siri ya kutoa dhabihu. Now Abraham Abraham alipoona ya kwamba amezeeka sana na hajapata mtoto Kauliza Mungu sasa nani atarithi utajiri wangu wote? Who will take over from me? Mungu akamuuliza unataka kujua? Yes. Akamwambia let the be. Genesis chapter 15 verse 18. Akamwambia let the be. Alipoleta ile dhabiu Aelezewa na Mungu alete ngombe, alete mwana kondoo, alete ni Mungu akaja mwenyewe Because sacrifice attracts the blessings of God When Noah made a sacrifice it attracted god look at this whenever you offer a sacrifice a sacrifice 
we say it is something precious you give in the altar of God or God's. When you give a sacrifice in the altar of God, it attacks the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you give sacrifice, katika matapahu zile zingine, who are in attract spirits? So if you want to attract God in your life, offer. Aha, you need point. Salimia mwenzako mwambia hivi. If you want to attract God in your life, Unameona kama imeingia ndani yake kabisa? Habana, uzaguza yeye, uzaguza yeye. Eh? <laughs> Abraham alipotoa ile dhabihu. Bara moja Biblia inasema Mungu mwenyewe akashuka. Hata Abraham alikuwa melala. Na sasa akaanza kunenea Abraham akamwambia kwamba <laughs> mimi ita <laughs> Taifa yote, mimi nitakupatia urithi Mutoto ametoka kwa mekupa yako Jio atakuwa murithi wako Sio mutumwa wako Na, mime, na, na ujua ya kwamba Wewe utakuwa baba wa mataifa Na hawa watu wako Wataenda misiri Watakaa pale miaka miaine Na baada ya kukaa pale aha, aha, e, Nitawaregesha katika ita feipa Na nitawapatia iweze kuwa urithi wao Kwa nasikwa saa Mungu akamfunulia yale yaliyo mbele yake. Hebu salimia mwenzako mwambie, ungependa Mungu akufunulie mambo yote yale yako mbele yako. Yale anakutatiza, maswali nyingi uko nayo. Ungependa? Eh? Abraham alipotamani kujua ni nini kitakachotendeka nani atakaye murithi kujua mambo ya baadaye Mungu alimwambia lete dhabihu alipoleta dhabihu Mungu akampatia picha ya kile kitakachotendeka zaidi ya miaka 600 takayefuata Zaidi. So, the bill iko na uwezo wa kukusaidia kuona mbele yako. You can see through into your future through sacrifice. You can see into your future through sacrifice. Naza kukufungie ngulia mlangu. And I have said, whenever a sacrifice comes on God's altar, it attracts his blessings. And when he comes, he speaks. Mungu wakikuja, anaonge? Anaonge. In Genesis chapter 22, I'm going to lead that one, please. Genesis chapter 22. Um. Uh, we are going to read from verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord came to Abraham the second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. By myself I have sworn, Muguanapa, says the Lord. Because you have done this thing. Because you have done this thing. Which thing? You have not withheld your son. Your only son. Mungu alikuwa na mwambia. Kwa sababu umefanya hivi. Kwa sababu ume kwa hitha biu umenitolea. Ya mtoto wako. Hau ukata. Uniti lakini umemtoa. Ata ingawa haku mchinja ye alikuwa tayari amepeana na alikuwa tayari kutoa dhabihu Mungu malaika wa Bwana ndiye alimshika mkono akamwambia usiguze kijana lakini katika moyo wake alikuwa amemalizana sasa baada ya ile dhabihu Mungu anakuja Mungu mwenyewe anakuja 
I want you to see the second uh, video. After Bada ya kutoa the bill, Kile in Achofuata, Mungu Akiwa Biguni and Ashuka. As Abraham and Ambu Akwamba, was a babu mefanya hivi. Na mimi ni naapa ya kwamba. Na mimi ni naapa ya kwamba. Blessings, I'll bless you. Nani ya naapa hivyo? Anazema baraka ni tafanya nini? The view ina ezafanya mungu ape ya kwamba atakubali. Hata kama watu hawataki. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, as the sun which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Na watoto wako, watamiliki milango ya maaduiwa, watatawara. Ifyo nukumanisha, watatawara maadui wao. Waza babu gani? Watoto wako, watatawara maadui Kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu umenitolea Sema the bill Yes The bill diye nafungwa hiyo beyote milangu Ya kubarikiwa Ya kubanuliwa kuongezeka Na kupewa neema ya kutawala Hiyo milangu yote inafunguliwa na kitu moja tu The bill Na ujue ya kwamba Sio ye tu anambiwa tabarikiwa Gen- It is generational Ye yeah, anabarikiwa na uzao wao na uzao wa uzao wa uzao wa uzao wa generation. Na hiyo mlango imefunguliwa tu na mtu moja kwa kutoa tabiu. Bana sasa. Ungependa vizazi vyako vya baadaye vibarikiwe. Ungependa vizazi vyako vya baadaye vi, watawale. Waongezeke. Eh? Salimia mwenzako mwambie elewa kutoa dhambiu. Amen. In the book of Second Chronicles, you tell you, verse 1, verse 6. Chapter 1, verse 6. Chapter 1, verse 6. Biblia inazema ya kwamba, wakati mungu walipo ona kijana moja, Suleimani, ametua dhabiu ya maelfu ya dume, ya maelfu ya kondo, ya maelfu ya buzi. Paka zikakosa kutoshea kwa hile madhabau zikawekwa kwa kila mahali. Bilea inasema kwamba that night. Sema that night. Baada ya kutua hiyo zotha biuzo, hiyo ni kazi ngumu sana. Jana hakaenda hakachoka, kabisa hakalala. Bada ya kufanya nini? Bada ya kufanya nini? <coughs> usiku wa manane mungu wa nabiju. Na muita kwa usikizi. Hey, kijana, amuka. Sasa hii, hii dhabiu yote umenitolea hapa. Hey, mwani ulikuwa nataka nini? Siuniambie. Siuniambie. Hivyo ni kumanisha kijana hata hakupata na vazi ya kuomba. Alitoa thabiu akachoka akalala. Na ya mungu, thabiu ikamutoa mungu hapi. Thabiu ikamutoa mungu biguni. Anakuja kuhita kijana kwa usikisi. Hea hey, munga. Mkimia pie. Bani ulikuwa nataka nini? Hea. Yeah. Nibaji. 
kile watu wengine huwa wanakangana maombi ni mzuri maombi hebu salimia mwenzako mwambie maombi ni mzuri sana alafu mwambie lakini dhabiu niwe mzuri zaidi kwa hivyo changanya weka dhabiu juu ya maombi eh sukuma maombi yako na dhabiu sukuma maombi yako na dhabiu Mungu naona kijana hata hajaomba. Hajaomba. Mungu anakuja kukutafuta. Eh? Wakati mwingine sisi ndio huwa tunatafuta Mungu sana. Tunaweza kumtafuta Mungu sana. Lakini saa hii unaona Mungu mwenyewe ndiye anakuja kukutafuta. Nani alitoa hiyo dhambi? Nani? Nani alitoa hiyo dhambi? Bana asiwe sana. Eh? Unakumbuka katika kitabu cha Second Kings chapter 4 I think chapter 4 Yule mama wa Shune You remember that 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 ma, uh, that mama Biblia inasema she was a rich woman Na Biblia inasema kwamba akaona nabii wa Mungu akipitia pale anampatia maji anampatia chakula Biblia inasema kwamba akaenda akakutana na mume wake akamwambia huyu 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 mwanaume sio mwanaume wa kawaida hapana no this is a holy man of na mimi naomba tu mume wangu niruhusu tumujengee nyumba huyu tumujengee huyu nabii nyumba pasta akatengewa nyumba akawekewa furniture ah haleluya Tumishi wa Bwana alipokuja akaingizwa kwa ile nyumba akapewa chakula akasema hapana hapana bingu ikaanza kuongea ikiwa ndani yake bingu ikaanza kuongea bingu ilipoona vile yule mama kile kitendo amefanya ah ikakosa ikakorogeka ikaanza kukosa amani kaanza kusema huyu mama sasa tutamfanyia nini? Tutamfanyia nini? Hebu aenda umuite. Mama anaipa. Nambia njo mama. Eh? Hebu, hebu nje. What is the problem? Eh? Kwaita ipa yote. Hebu sema, hebu sema. Na mama ajaomba. Mama ana anachimbwa anasema mimi sina shida. Mimi naishi na watu wangu. Sina shida. Lakini bado mimi naanza kuwa na wasiwasi. Eh? sababu imekorogwa na ile dhabihu imekorogwa na ile dhabihu imekorogwa na ile dhabihu mama anaenda hai eh yeye anasema nimeangalia kwa hii nyumba nimeona watu ni wazee sijaona mtoto hapa amwambie enda ite huyo mama enda huyo anakimbia anaenda nabii anakuita tena anakuja anakuja anaambiwa ya kwamba anasimama anasimama tu kwa mlango nabii anasema ya kwamba wakati kama huu mwaka ujao kwa jina la bwana wewe utakuwa unanyonyesha mtoto wa kijana haleluya kitu hata yule mama alikuwa alikuwa ameomba mtoto she had not even prayed she had not asked for it lakini biku ndio inatafuta nini? Kwani yako na hitaji gani? Hai, mimi nataka muelewe vile dhabiu inaweza kukufanyia kazi. Dhabiu ikufanyie kazi. Ati mpaka inakuja kutafuta ni nini? Kwani kwani wewe unakuwa na hitaji gani? Eee. Mama aku ameitisha mtoto. Halo. Lakini kupitia kwa dhabiu utata wake ukavunjika na ile nyumba haikuwa na mtoto ikapata mtoto haleluya kupitia kwa dhabihu na unajua watu wengi huwa wanazoea shida mpaka wanaona kama ni kawaida mama hata kwa na shida <laughs> na mtoto alikuwa amezoea ah mimi niko 
sawa tunapendana na mume wangu kila kitu ni sawa lakini dhabiu dhabiu salimia mwenzako muambie operating at the level of sacrifice amen Haleluya. Amen. Hmm? Biblia inasema bingu ikafunguka. Sulemani alipotoa ile dhabi. Bwana akashuka. Akaja kukutafuta. Huyo kijana amefanya hii, amelala wapi? Ako wapi? Wewe kijana ni nini? Umelala. Kwani ulikuwa unataka bana sasa Haleluya Dabiu inaweza tumika kama siraha ya bingu In the book of First Samuel chapter 7 verse 7 First Samuel chapter 7 verse 7 Biblia inasema ya kwamba vita kati ya wanaisraeli na wafilisti ikawa ikazidi sana ikazidi sana na wanaisraeli wakaogopa kwa sababu waliona kama wanaweza shindwa na wafilisti wakakimbia kwa mchungaji kimbia kwa mchungaji Samuel Kamwambia sasa pasta niombe pray for us Ni mara ngapi umeuliza pasta wako wa kuombe? Hebu salimia mwenzako mwambie pai. Kuambia pasta wako wa kuombe. Wewe salimia mtu, salimia mtu. Mimi naenda pole. Niko karibu kumaliza. Naenda pole pole sababu nataka hii kitu ushike mzuri. We, mzee. Mwambi, salimia mtu na umulize hivyo. Aya. wakati mwingine ukasikia vita iko kali mpaka ukamwambia pasta mimi nataka uniombe pasta nimekuja uniombe mhm kampigia pasta simu kamwambia mimi nataka uniombe bilia inasema pasta aliwaitisha dhabiu na akawaambia kwamba wamletee dhabiu ya mwana kondo na Biblia inasema akaenda uhani akaipeleka kwa madhabahu akaitoa kama sadaka la kuteketeza and the bible says wakati Mungu alipoweza kuona ile dhabiu Bwana akaguruma na akapigana na wafilisti vita mpaka ikaisha Mungu akawapigania from the moment he offered that sacrifice Aliwaitisha tu leta leteni dhabiu ya mwana kondo leta dhabiu ya mwana kondo Hebu hebu niwaulize Kama nisiulize huyu ni mtu na anahitaji ameenda kwa mchungaji na mchungaji amemwambia ni mara gani enda leta dhabihu ya mwana kondo lakini hao ni, was, ni, ni wale washirika wazuri wanashika network ya rohoni 
Halo. Najua kuna wengine ukiwaambia leta tabii we. Mimi napeleka kwa magazeti. Huyo pasta wetu siku hizi ukimwambia kuombe. Eh? Ukimwambia kuombe. Halo. Wali tishwa dhambi ya mwana kondo wakaleta. Naye Mungu Biblia inasema akakuruma kata na kawapigania wa Filisti. Hawajawahi kuona vita kama hiyo. Sababu Mungu mwenyewe alipigana na wao. God took over the battle. When the priest intervened, wakati kwa hali alipoingilia, God took over the battle. And there was victory that day. And thereafter the power of operating at the, the level of bana sekwasa in the book of, as i finish in the book of first king chapter 18 verse 13 to verse 39 elijah akawauliza wana israeli sasa uchague ni nani utakayemtumikia kama ni Mungu wa Israeli kama ni Mungu wa Bali akawa challenge kaita taifa lote mpaka mfalme akatetishwa wa pale ndio watu wachague alafu akawa challenge wale makuhani kwambia kwamba sasa tunataka kuona ni Mungu na wa, ni Mungu gani anaweza kujibu na moto na yule Mungu atajibu na moto huyo ndio tutamtumikia baada ya ile ibada ya makuhani wa bali ya masaa mingi haikufaulu bingu kapungana kuna kitu ilichendeka hata wakijaribu kujikatakata na kitu tumishi wa Bwana akaja Biblia inasema akale resto akamjengea bwana madaba alafu kaitisha ndume ndume ka chinyo kakatwa malaki kawekelea juu ya ile madaba kawekelea juu ya zile kuni walikuwa meleta hizo vitu sio elija alileta si ndio hao walileta ndio ama elija alitoa ngombe wapi na kuni Jody, <laughs> wakainama wakamwabudu bwana wakasema bwana jehova peke die bwana there was a great revival and a restoration katika taifa la israeli kupitia the power of the power of so there are times we also need to gather together kama fellowship ama kama kanisa na tunatoa dhambi Dio kuwe na revival. Dio kuwe na restoration. Restoration. Hata wakati mwingine you gather your family na mnatoa dhambi. Na mtolea Mungu dhambi. Dio Bwana alete ulegesho na uzima. bana sikwesa Second Samuel chapter 24 verse 15 to verse 25 right somewhere Biblia inasema kwamba Daudi kukawa na tauni ilikuwa ime imeangamiza watu wengi sana katika zaidi ya sabini elfu jamii zilikuwa zinaomboleza kwa sababu watu wao walikuwa wamekufa hiyo asubuhi kwa kugongwa na ile tauni na 
Bwana Bwana kamnenea kwa sababu ya Daudi kulilia Mungu Biblia inasema kwamba Bwana kamnenea akamwambia aweze kwenda kumtengenezea Bwana uh, Bwana madhabahu Na madhabahu ikainuliwa Ile inasema kwamba mzee akamwambia kwamba dume dio hii buni dio hizi shamba dio hii yote mimi nakupatia buni Utolee Mungu dhabiu dio asimamishe hii mawimbi ya tauni Daudi akanyenyekea akamwambia mimi siwezi kubali Utolea Mungu wangu dabiu isiyo ni karibu chochote Halo Bana sifuwe Ndugu salimia mwenzako kwa upole mwambie usifurahie tu vitu za bure Salimia huyo mwingine na mwambie kwamba usitolee Mungu kitu haikugaribu kama haikugaribu that's not a sacrifice that's not a sacrifice biblia inasema kwamba daudi akasema mimi nataka kugaribika hiyo shamba litalipa full price kuni full price ngombe full price akalipa biblia inasema alipotoa ile dhabiu malaika wa bwana mama kati ya wale waliokuwa makufa na wale walio hai na Daudi kaisha hapo 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 presence ya Mungu iliposhuka pale Daudi kaisha Bwana asifiwe kumbe tunajia tunaweza tumia kusimamisha tauni zingine zinafuata maisha yetu na jamii zetu na taifa kumbe kuna kitu tunaweza fanya alo bana sefe ile inasema sacrifice as i finished sacrifice is moving from ordinary to extraordinary zile jia unatumianga za kawaida unaziweka mkono wa kushoto unainua zingine zisizo za kawaida refusing to relate with the god at the level of arms Siku hizi kuna mafuriko ya wa, ya wale watu wa wa kuomba in the streets kuna mafuriko kila mita paka juzi nilikuwa naona watu na nyuki uh, commission akilalamika ya kwamba kuna watu watafanywa msako waweze kuwekwa kwa maroli warudishwe kule kwao pande ya taka kuna mafuriko kila mahali hata wiru kila mahali Nairobi watu wa kuomba lakini ni vizuri tuweze kusaidia watu when they have a genuine problem. Sababu hawa kuna wengine wanaomba lakini hizo pesa sio hata sio zao, hiyo ni biashara. Wanatumiwa na watu matajiri sana. Lakini ni vizuri tukaweza kuangalia katika communities zetu wale watu wako na real issues people we know who are orphans we know windows we know katika communities zetu na tusimame na wale watu Oya salimia mwenzako mwambie kabla hujaenda hujaenda kusaidia mikono ya Tanzania saidia watu wa kwenu Wamejaa huko Githurai 
Achana na hao kwanza. In your community, there are real orphans, you know. Ati huyu ni mutoto wa morani. In your community, there are real windows, you know. Hmm? Really needy people, you know. Kabla ujana kusaidia hawa. Si usaidia wale wewe unajua. Wale wanakuhusu. Wale wako katika area ya kwenu. Hawa wanakuhusu sana. Kabu hata hawa ingine ujui kama ni ukwenja ama ni uongo. Ama na mna gani wapendwa? Now, okay, there are others we meet in the street, come out and we say, oh, oh, oh. Sasa, Jesus, Jana, Udenya, you can't have a Wengine, you can't have a kwa street, you can't uchafu, a beba, you can't have a job, you can't have a job, you can't have a Yo bao na itafuta haraka haraka muachane. Sidiyo? Yo bao na itafuta haraka haraka mfanya nini? No. Unampatia kwa sababu unamujua. Unampatia kwa sababu unampenda. Yeah? Yo bao ama yo fifth. Unampatia kwa sababu unamujua ama kwa sababu unampenda. Is it out of love? Sometimes it's out of love. Hello? Do you know there are some people in the church that operate that relate to God at the level of arms? When we give arms, we give what we don't need. That which you don't need. Zida ulibakisha ukitoka kwa supermarket. Hiyo hiyo unaweka hapo sasa hiyo hiyo ndio meta kwa. Relating to God at the level of arms. That time they are relating to God at the level of arms. Treating God like a beggar. Treating God like a beggar in the street. Because what you are giving God is what you give to that beggar. Kino nampatia mwana, jicho ungepatia yule yule mukora. Ama yule, wengine, wengine ni wakora. Na wengine they are jinwi. Wengine ni mewambia muwe na hekuma. Kwanza muwe muna zaidia watu wa kwenu. Mwenu kuna watu unajua jinwi. This is a genuine case. This is a little open. This is a real window. This is a real need case. Let's attend those things first in our churches. Hello? But that is not the point. Point near relating. How do we relate with God? Because you can choose to relate to God at different levels. And there are those who have chosen to relate with God at the lowest level, at the level of arms. At kile anaweza kupatia mutu kule kwa barabara diyo anaweza kuleta kwa madhabahu kwa mungu. Ukambia, leo nataka tutoe the bill. Diyo, diyo anaweza. The same thing. Kila anaweza kupatia pika. Ati diyo atakuja na yo na alete. Na mwenye we alete kwa madhabahu. Relating with God at the very lowest level. If you treat God like a beggar, what you will get the results of the same level. If you treat God like the great king, he will respond to you as a great king. As a great king. But if you treat him at the that level. He will respect, respond back at the same, same level. You know what I'm teaching? So why don't you ask your neighbor, at what level do you relate with God? Pole, pole, tu nasi kujibu. Salimi atu, na usi muogope, at what level? Provoke him to think at what level? 
at what level? At what level? Because the, the results you have been getting and the results you continue to get is determined by the level you have chosen to relate with God. Why don't you allow me to finish with the Second Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 27? But I'm going to give you an overview. Three nations are against one nation. Three nations against one nation. And then, Ufalme, Bibili Nazema, Joshofati, Akopale, Ufalme, Mungine, Pale, Wa Samalia, Bibili Nazema, Na Akamuambia, Sasa, Eh, inaonekana ni kama Mungu ametuleta hapa atumalize na hawa mataifa matatu lakini ningeomba tutafute nabii wa Bwana tutafute pasta moja ile tunajua natumika na Mungu nabii akaitwa nabii akaitwa Angalia yule mfalme hivi akamwambia isipokuwa ni heshima ya Joshua Shofat mimi hata singe singe karibia hapo lakini kwa heshima yake nimekuja lakini bwana anasema hivi usiwe na wasiwasi kesho Mungu atawapatia maji ya kutosha yenyu wa kunywa na mifugo yenu yote na hiyo tu ataitoshi Mungu atawazidishia atawapatia ushindi juu ya maadui wenu. Pastor kwa tabidia. Watu wakafurai sana na wakaenda wakala. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. The Bible says early in the morning. Julie the grain the offered grain offering. Wende hapo. Verse 20. Now it happened in the morning. Jana walitabili wa nanabi. Si pasta aliwatabili ya ushidi mkubu wa sana. Mungu watapatia nini? Maji ya kutosha. Na ni kweli, waliku wa muka. Waliku ta maji mebulika mahali everywhere. Sababu mungu waliku wa mesema kwa mba bila mvua na bila mawingu. Maji ya kutosha. Iyo usiwe na wasi wasi. But verse 20. Bibidi na sema... Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered. But suddenly there was water come from Edom and the land was filled with water. In the mornings, next morning, wakamuka. Biblia inasema kwamba, they offered grain offering. Grain nini? Grains. Maindi, Maragwe, Bosho, Nini, Hiyo yote kwa jina moja ni? Kadheri. Eh, Maindi, Maragwe, Bosho, Nini, Hiyo kwa jina moja muna hita Nini? Sini kadheri? Watu wa mungu wakamuka asubui? Watu walio pewa unabimu kupwa Kwa ushidi mkupwa Na wamejionera macho yao Mujiza usio faiwai kufanyika tangu dunia yumbwe Ya kwamba bila mawingu Na bila mvua Maji mefulika kila mahali Na jana walikuwa nakufa kwa kiu Wanyama wawa walikuwa nakufa kwa kiu Na sasa wameona hiyo yote Wakaenda bele ya buwana Kwa madhabau Na wakapeana Sadaka The biura Sema gadheli Eh, watu wapande hii Sema gadheri Kwani? Haiku kwa bibi yako? Hebu soma Verse 20 Where? Read it, it is in your Bible They offer Sadaka ya gadheri Early in the morning Waka offer sadaka ya gadheri Bibi nenda sema ya kwa Arabu wakaenda wapi? Vita 
baada ya kutoa sadaka ya kadhali wakaenda wapi vita biblia inasema ya kwamba walipoenda vita mungu akawapatia ushindi mkubwa sana 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 verse 26 biblia inasema ya kwamba walipompalme ule <laughs> alipoona ya kwamba hawa watu bila wako na ujasiri na bila wamewasukuma akajaribu kuleta watu 600 wa mtengenezee njia atoroke wakashindwa na sasa ako pale kwa mji na anajua sasa ika mji itachoka akafikiria haraka sana biblia inasema kwamba akaenda akamtoa mtoto wake wa pekee aliyekuwa aburithi akamweka juu ya ukuta akamtoa kama sadaka na kuteketeza kwa miungu yake Halo sema mara moja vita itapitukana watu wa Israeli wakachanganyikiwa wakaanza kukasirikiana wako kwa vita pande moja lakini wana, na, na, na walikuwa na shida sasa waka, wakaanza kukasirikiana walipoanza kukasirikiana wakakasirikiana kiwango kiwango ya kwamba kila mtu akachukua silaha zake aelekea kwa mka wake nyumbani hata bila kuambia komanda everybody na vita ikai nataka uangalie wewe unataka kutawara kwa ndoa wewe unataka kutawara sokoni wewe unataka kutawara kwa muchi but you are operating at the level of arms while your enemies are at operating at the level of human sacrifice unawezaje kulinganisha dhabihu la mwana wa pekee na dhabihu la gadheni hello mera mali kwingine nikakuta kwa kwamba mahala wana biashara wanaendanga kesha every friday kwa mchana Every Friday wanaenda kwa mchana. Kutoa ibada na kutoa dhabihu. Alafu Wajenda pale sokoni. Wale wanashindana nao. Ni ushuhuda tu hapo nayo. Hata mimi nilikuwa Kristo, hata mimi nimebatizwa. Eh. Nikaanza katika mahali wakati wakati nilikuwa hapa. Na hata ukimuliza, na unaza unafanya nini kwa kanisa yetu? Hakuna mimi nikaanza kuniambia na yanga tu. Mm-hmm. Na sasa ulitoa sadaka ina gani? Hata sitaki kutaja. Halo. Hawa watu alafu wakutane wapi? Sokoni. Yule hata hakujagi kwa kesha. Yule hata hakujagi kwa maombi yule hata hajitolei kwa kazi ya, ya kwa kazi ya Mungu kwa kanisa yao lakini yule ako highly committed hawezi kukosa katika kesha za wachawi ili waende wakafanywe ibada na wakapewe sui maji na wakapewe dini na wakapewe vitu za vipangio za kwenda kupangia pale kabla hakutakuja anapangia pale nani ibada anafanya mwingine unaona anamwaga mwaga maji nani ibada anafanya eh na nakwambia nani atatawara katika hiyo soko Who is more committed? Who is more dedicated? Hey, kufaulu katika maisha ni madhabahu. Inategemea ile madhabahu inakutetea wewe. Kufaulu inategemea ile madhabahu inakutetea wewe. Na ile uwezo wa ile madhabahu inayokutetea eh inategemea ile dhabihu unaweka kwa ile madhabahu. Unaweza kuwa wewe ni mtu wa Mungu na madhabahu ya Mungu ishindwe na kukutetea kwa sababu wewe hata hujajiunganisha na hiyo madhabahu hata utumiki hiyo madhabahu hata uleti dhabihu zako kwa hiyo madhabahu hata ikawa yeye ni mtu wa Mungu Halo Bana sasa Oh mama wengine wako hapa Bwana zao hajaokoka Ile mzee every friday 
Every Saturday, wameenda kuchinja mbuzi za wazee. Every day anachukua pesa damu ya jamii anaipeleka katika madhabahu ya ulevi. Every now and then anachukua isehemu kikubwa anaenda anaingiza katika madhabahu ya usharati. Rafu naye dada tu hapo hapa kanisani anakaa sijui. Lakini mimi nasikia hata sijuzi hata kama sika sika maombi ataki nini eh hajitolei hata dhabiwa kuna hebu na niambie ni roho gani tatawara kwa hiyo boma ni roho gani sasa ni madhabahu ya mzee ama ni madhabahu ya mama who is more committed more dedicated nani ameinua madhabahu yake juu kuliko mwingine kwa hiyo ni madhabahu gani tatawara kwa hiyo nyumba Eh, hata wewe lazima uamuke. Salimia mtu mwambie wewe lazima uamuke. Yes. Hata kulia ati bila uko blessed, hata wewe amsha madhabahu yako, inua madhabahu yako. Yes. Kama mume anatoa dhabiu huko, hata wewe kuja toa kwa Mungu wako. Yes. Akitoa huko hata wewe kuja toa. Yaani. Inua madhabahu. Inua madhabahu. Dio hata wewe uwe na sauti kwako. Dio kwanza unaona wengine wamenyimwa sauti kwao. Paka wanakuwa controlled na. Hmm? Wananyimwa sauti kwa sababu sauti kile kinakupatia sauti nyumbani ni madhabahu. Kile kinakupatia sauti sokoni ni ile madhabahu <laughs> inakufanyia backing. Hiyo ndio inakupatia sauti ya kutawara pale. Hello? Na hiyo sauti inategemea nini? Commitment yako how you are relating na ile madhaba at what level? Bana sasa. Operating at the level of wewe watu wapande. Operating at the level of relating to god at the level of i've given you several scriptures noah anatoa sadaka dhabiu mungu anashuka anakuja kuweka maagano naye abraham anatoa dhabiu mungu anakuja anamwambia mimi nimeamba kwa jina langu mimi mungu kwa sababu umetoa hii dhabiu ufariki nitakufariki ukongezea nitakuongezea na vile watoto wako ambao Suleimani anatoa dhabiu anaenda analala anachoka analala anakuja kwa mwisho na Mungu eh kwani kijana ulikuwa unataka nini hii dhabiu yote kwani ulikuwa unataka nini Shuna mali human anatoa dhabiu anauliza eh unataka nini unataka tukufanyie nini anasema ambia bro bro i need to my own people i have what i need lakini jehazi anaangalia lakini nabi kwa hii nyuma mimi sioni sioni mtoto Hello. 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 Kutetewa na dhabiu. Dhabiu inaweza kukutetea. Dhabiu inaweza kukupigania. Dhabiu inaweza kukufungulia milango. Dhabiu inaweza kukuinua. Dhabiu inaweza kukufanya utawale. Dhabiu inaweza fanya hata watoto wa watoto to the 10th, 20th generation wabarikiwe kwa sababu ya ya agano umeweka na Mungu. Dhabiu dabiu dabiu bana sasa amen sasa tunamalizia mwaka wa 2022 mtu mwenye hek 2022 mtu mwenye hekima mtu mwenye hekima ninaongea kuhusu mtu mwenye hekima anastahili kuketi chini na kushukuru Mungu kumwambia Mungu mimi niko uhai tangoda ya malai Thank God that I'm walking. Thank God for my family. Thank God for this. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Ulete dhabahu kwa madhabahu ya 
Bwana. Amen. Tuko pamoja. Bas. Tunaingia mwaka wa 2022. Unastahili kusimama na kusema kwamba huu mwaka wa 2023 Mungu naomba nianze na wewe na ninitembee na wewe. Na ninainua dhabiu, ninainua dhabiu ya kunitetea mwezi wa Januari, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. Kwa niamba yangu, kwa niamba ya watoto wangu. Ninainua dhabiu na kutangaza ya kwamba magonjwa haitatuona. Nainua dhabiu ya kutangaza ya kwamba maadui wa hatima yangu, maadui wa huduma hawataniona. Halo, mulete kwa madhaba, wana aswe sana. Njini wachugaji, upeleke dhabiu zenu wapi? Kwa madhaba hu, ujirete dhabiu. Ha? Ujirete dhabiu. No, that's not right. That's not right. By the way, we should not even tithe it to ourselves. Does it make sense? Nabi, does it make sense? Nani ya litufunza hiyo tabia? Ati utoe tithe to tizole. Ayy, that is not from the Bible. Wachugaji, naongea na wachugaji. Naongea na wachugaji. Ati unarete tithe yako kwa matapahu mahali na hudu. You should always give your tithe to higher authority. Always give your tithe to higher authority. If you are the authority kwa hiyo madhabau, haustahili kutoa the nini? Tithe kwa hiyo madhabau. If you are the authority there. Because you should tithe to higher authority. Mume ni pata wapo vizuri wachukaji. Na sisi wa shirika tunastahili kulete tithe wapi? kwa authority yetu kwa madhabahu ya kanisa yetu amen nao wachugaji haya authority haleluya sasa mwaka ukiisha toa dhabiu la shukrani mwaka ukianza toa dhabiu la akutembea na bwana la imani, la imani. Ya kwamba mwaka wa 2023 utakuja na unikute na unie <laughs> na nitaitawala. E, na itanipenda. Hii mwaka ya 2023 itanipenda. Eh. Are we getting it? Bana asifu sana. Nikimalizia ninasema hivi. Kanisa la mitume lirisimamishwa na dhabiu people were giving sacrifices acts chapter 4 biblia inasema kwamba wakaja watu wakaleta dhabiu zao katika miguu ya mitume na katika lile kanisa hakukuwa masikini yote kwa sababu kila department ilishughulikiwa kulingana na mahitaji yake na sasa sasa watu waki machua watu waki machua we start operating at the level of sacrifice hata tun haja ya kitu inaitwa maharabe maharabe tuna harabe kwa kanisa thaini tuna harabe kwa kanisa thaini hawa jana na hizo a a a a Bana asifu sana. Hebu simamene tuombe. Nataka tu usimame pale na ujiombe. <clears throat> Mwambie Mungu sasa Bwana umeninenea. Na nimeona ya kwamba kuna niko na nafasi ya cooperate at a higher frequency, at a higher level. 